So you see here, I have added the three records here, right? 1411, 1411, 1412. But the end timestamp I can see has been converted to their respective time zone. Welcome to the fourth part of my series ETL SQL scenarios. And in this video, we'll talk about timestamp and time zone. So we all create timestamp columns, start timestamp, end timestamp. But there is a time zone value also associated with these timestamp columns. In this video, I'll explain you that if you have three stores spread across the world, like here in this case, I have three stores for a company in three different country, USA, India and Australia. And their IT hub is in India that processes data for all the three stores. And assuming that all three stores have set their local time zone in their OLTP server. So a daily incremental job will run it will fetch the data from OLTP server that resides in these three countries and it will bring the data for the previous day, will load it to their staging table, will go through the typical ETL pipeline and create data mart or data warehouse. Say that the job is triggered at 2 a.m. in India office. Now the 2 a.m. in India is 4.30 p.m. in New York and 6.30 a.m. in Melbourne. If I run this job at 2 a.m., I will be losing some data for New York City because it is still not 12 midnight in New York. So what you can do is either you can run your job multiple times to avoid any data loss or in your daily incremental job, rather than reading data for minus one day, you read data for minus two days maybe just to make sure that you are not losing any data. But this is a bad approach because you may be refreshing the same data multiple times or two times in this case. So what is the solution for it? So first thing is UTC time zone is your best friend. You can have a global business spread across multiple countries. In all the countries, everybody is following UTC time zone. Then this problem will not occur. So use UTC time zone in all three countries to store data. Convert your daily job to intraday job to cover 24 hours of data for all three countries. The problem with this approach is you will run multiple jobs with that can consume more resources. The second solution is you run your job once when all the stores across different countries have crossed 12 midnight. Now the downside of this approach is the data refresh data latency will be very high. For example, Business user sitting in Melbourne office may have to wait for 2 p.m., 3 p.m. to get the sales report for yesterday data. This problem statement is clear to you. Let's quickly do a small test in SQL to see how, how time zone can impact the timestamp value which you are storing into the table. Alright, so in this small test, what I will do is I will create a temporary table. I will add some timestamp column into it. And then I'll change my time zone and we'll insert some records into the table. And we'll see that if, right? So before we start, I will just check my time zone. What time zone right now is fixed for, by default. So I can see the default time zone it is showing as Euro Berlin. Uh, remember that the time zone setting actually it impacts your client, not your server. So if I'm changing my time zone here, it is changing the time zone of my client, which is the Beaver in this case. It won't change the actual Postgres server, which I'm using for this test purpose, right? So what I will do is I'll create a temp table. Let's call it as temp timestamp underscore time zone. And I'll create a start timestamp column in it and I will give it timestamp as a data type and with time zone. So this is the additional keywords I'm adding to the data type. I'm explicitly mentioning that this timestamp value will hold the time zone value as well. And then end timestamp I'll create. And when you, I just write timestamp, by default it creates with no time zone or without time zone. I will also add additional column here which will tell us that for to which time zone does the records belong to, right? So let me add one more column and create this table. So the table is created. What I will do is I will insert a dummy record into this table. Insert into this value. 
and what I will do is I will use this current setting time zone comma current timestamp this is what we generally use or sometimes we can use this date now whatever function depending on your database right so if I'm inserting a record is inserted let me show you the value of the record so you see here time zone is Euro Berlin 210 is the local time and 210 is the end time zone because my start time and end time both belongs to the same time zone right now I'm not seeing any difference right but what I will do now is I will change the time zone to Australia like uh, in the example I shared earlier we have three stores one is in Australia Melbourne the other is in India and the third one is in US New York right so I will create those time zones and I'll set those time zones and I'll run the same query again so this query I will run three times and I will set time zone to Australia Melbourne because Australia has different time zones you have to specify this and now I will load it similarly I will set time zone to Asia Calcutta and then I will load and last I will set time zone to America New York and now I want you to see the data so you see here I have added the three records here right 1411 1411 1412 but the end timestamp I can see has been converted to their respective time zone so this becomes actual was 1140 but since this is Australia it has actually become 18 so I've already gone to the next day and it is 12 midnight uh, in Australia in Asia, Calcutta, in India, we have 6.41 time. And in New York, we have 9.12. So if at every place, say I have three OLTP server using Postgres and they have created a column end timestamp. And now they have set their different time zone. The end timestamp for a transaction which happens almost at the same time. The end timestamp has difference of many hours. And say my IT hub, which is in India, is running a job. It triggers a job at, say, at 2 a.m. What will happen? At 2 a.m., it will be able to read all the data for 17th for India, obviously for Melbourne also. But for New York, it will still be few hours before the 12 midnight hits in New York. So I'll be losing that amount of data for my New York center. Uh, the solution is you keep everything in UTC. So set your time zone to UTC. And then you load the data into your timestamp columns. That's one way you can handle it. Or you can run your job multiple times in a day. Because if you are running your scheduler in a UTC time, say 2 a.m., uh, then still you can lose some data for New York, right? Uh, or you can run your job multiple times in a day and it will refresh as and when the new data is coming, it will refresh, right? So this is a very basic thing. And many of the new data analytics softwares which are coming into the picture, they handle the time zone differences automatically. I've seen that. I worked on some platforms where the time zone differences were automatically diagnosed and fixed. So the end user does not have to worry about it. So hope this helps. Uh, it's a very rare scenario where you will encounter this problem. But you should keep this thing in mind that while handling with timestamp, the time zone also matters and it may result in different uh, data output than expectations. Hope you learned something new today.